What's up, YouTube? If you're ready to take this yo-yo a little bit more serious, or if you're just a little curious as to how to proceed with one of these guys right here, I got five things that you need to be concerned about, and we're going to start right now. Okay, so you got a yo-yo. Now what? Well, the answer isn't quite as binary as black and white. But if you stick with me through the journey, I'll help you get what you need. Welcome back. This is the definitive yo-yo and I'm Simply Mike. Today, we're discussing hurdles that need to be overcome. I'm sorry, viewer, but I gotta rip this band-aid off and tell it to you straight. See, there will likely be no yo-yo renaissance, no big boom. So you and I, we're in the smallest minority. This hobby, this yo-yo thing, will probably be forever in the fringe. I'm using these cute puppies to mask a harsh reality that we have to face. Either accept it or acquiesce. Yo-yo will never be in the mainstream. The most we can hope for is a few guys at clubs, a tournament or two, and, fortunate for you, this exciting online community. See, we live in a time of instant everything. Instant coffee, microwave popcorn, drive up, drive throughs, and home delivery to your door in 24. And that makes people less inclined to invest. You know the biggest comment I get about yo-yoing? After they ask, can you do walk the dog? I say, no, not with this yo-yo because it's $80. $80? Then they look at me like I'm on the biggest fool alive. Yeah, but you'll spend $45,000 on a truck that you're only going to keep for four years. Anyway, if that's your attitude, skip to the end. But for the rest of us, we're going to dive right in. It's not your number one concern. But it should be the first thing you're concerned about. I'm talking strings. Recently, I asked a new player how his yo-yo was holding up. He handed it to me, and it had no less than six knots in the string. How did this happen? When you're a new player, you focus almost exclusively on the tricks. I'm guilty of that too, but your hardware needs to be in order especially the string because it's the string that you'll be manipulating and handling the most. If you've gotten your first yo-yo and didn't get some extra string to go with it, you put yourself at a serious disadvantage. There comes a time when you don't have to worry about it much, but initially, as a new player, you need it and you got to get to that point. So that's why I'm mentioning it. Admittedly, there's a lot of information, a lot of variables when it comes to string. Bounce, weight, type, length, and material. But really you should only concern yourself with the two different types that I'm gonna mention. That's bulk string and boutique string. Bulk string is your get it and forget it, everyday use string. It usually sells in packs of 50 or 100 and is competitively priced. Boutique string, on the other hand, usually specializes in either being softer or better performing or a combination of the two. I recommend either uh, zipline or aeretic strings. However, Yo-Yo String Lab, the plutonium, featured by Evan Nagal, is pretty decent. But whatever it is, get you some more because you're going to need it. Just one more thing. Clean, good string, new string. It's better than old, greasy, nasty string. And speaking of hardware, we need to concern ourselves with regular maintenance. Surprisingly, there are two minds of thought regarding opening up a yo-yo. First, there are those that don't mind opening up a yo-yo, giving it the old spritz and returning to business as usual. Then there are those who completely reject the idea of a yo-yo being unscrewed. 
like ever. Personally, I don't follow that logic. I'm a believer of you get what you give. So if you wanted to perform 100%, you got to take care of it like you wanted to work 100%. Plus, Modern yo-yos were made to be taken apart. The internals are pretty standard and the tools needed is pretty basic. The only caution I would offer is don't obsess over it too much. It's not going to make you a better player. And once you do learn how to maintain your yo-yo, it'll be like strings in that you don't need to think about it too much until something comes up. Let's talk about vibe just for a little bit. First, let's define what vibe really is. You see that shimmy in the yo-yo, that little bouncy? That's vibe, short for vibration. More often than not, you don't see vibe, but you can feel it, especially on a fingernail test. But what is it? Well, the official definition says that two halves of a yo-yo become mismatched through either uneven weight distribution or a misalignment. There's three major reasons why a vibe is introduced. The first is damage. Remember, we're throwing this to the ground. The second is a material imbalance. Wood and some molded plastics sometimes have density variations which contribute to vibe. And the third are tiny variations left from the machining process. Just enough to add a touch of vibe to the finished product. The caveat, however, is that modern machining results in far less yo-yos that have vibe. Most big grades nowadays are for anno or cosmetic flaws. But what you really want to know is, how much does vibe really matter? We hear a lot about it. We've defined it. But I'm finding that it's newer players that make a little bit more of a deal out of vibe than the longer standing players. Even some professionals don't mind a touch of vibe. And we're talking about vibe that isn't too substantial. Any yo-yo vibe that makes the yo-yo wobble or makes it unplayable, well, that's universally agreed that it's no bueno. Now, when it comes to retailers and manufacturers, you should expect a better quality, less vibe yo-yo. Many of these businesses pride themselves on their quality. But if you approach the BST or secondhand market, you might want to manage your expectations. Because vibe doesn't necessarily speak to quality. But to each his own, right? It's time to start talking tricks. How do we make that good progress? Yeah, I know what you're thinking. I know you want to get to this. With the flashy edits. But more often than not, we all start out looking like this guy. So sad. <laughs> Even the professionals had to work at it. So let's talk about where to start. At the very beginning of your yo-yo journey, you need to learn these 10 tricks. These are the basics, especially the first one, walk the dog, because everybody's going to ask you about it. And because you're learning the basics, you need a basic yo-yo to get started. This one features a transaxle system with a plastic bearing. Good enough to start. You need that because some of the tricks you can't even do on a more advanced, unresponsive yo-yo. So learn these basics. And it's not really the basics that you're trying to learn, because really, you're trying to learn how to throw properly. With those basics out of the way, you can now step into the player's arena. These 20 tricks lay a solid foundation for some really good players. And they also represent the first 20 tricks found on a sport or trick ladder. Now you can graduate to some better hardware, but we'll talk about that in a second. 
I've said it before, this is a great time for Yo-Yo. Obviously, you may need some more information, so go to YoTricks.com or Yo-Yo Expert. They have tutorials to help you get these basics established. But just a word of caution. Online tutorials can't critique what you're doing. So it's best to get in with a club or another player so that they can look at you and help you smooth out and perfect those tricks. At the very least, you can post videos to the BST and we'll tell you what's up. It's time to talk hardware. And there are some subtle differences that we need to explore. If you take a look around, of course there's all different types of yo-yo. Different colors, shapes, styles, sizes, and all of that. Understandably, I was a little overwhelmed too. And I didn't understand what different characteristics and subtleties yo-yos bring to the discussion. It can be a little confusing. To simplify matters, all the yo-yos generally fall into three levels. You have your entry level, which is the plastics and some entry level metal yo-yos. Then you have your tier two budget or mid-level yo-yos. And at the high end of the spectrum is the professional level yo-yos. And those have sometimes exotic materials, specialties, or they're optimized for top level performance. If you go back in my catalog, you'll notice that I don't ever say this is the best or the worst or what have you. I don't speak in those terms because I realize that it's all subjective. I generally say this year you was good for this or that. But I also realize that some players are not like me. I prefer the big wide yo-yos because of my skill level. But there are some, like these pictures, these guys here, that can do fast speed combos. Uh, they can use whatever string. Or they have a yo-yo that's optimized for their play style. And I can't really speak to that. So I don't. <laughs> what does all this mean to you, new person? Well, I recommend that you start small and work your way up. You really should only acquire yo-yos for your current level. This, doing so, will ease your frustration, help you save money, and in the long run, save you from a yo-yo that you might not be able to manage. Next, we're gonna concern ourselves with just a few precautions. There's a phenomenon that new players fall into, and I was guilty of it too, called chasing a trick. Your moves are just too jerky and you're trying too hard. So that could be stalling your progress. What you need is flow and it only comes through practice. So slow down, ease up a little bit and stop chasing the trick. You'll get it. There is such a thing as yo-yo hype and trends. Bimetals was a trend, finger spin was a trend, wide boys was a trend, and fixed axles are currently, along with some smaller units. Now you can allow these to shape your play, but overall, as fads do, they fade, and it doesn't change your core experience. Reviews and research is a little limited. You're not gonna hear too many bad reviews because there's not too many bad yo-yos that's being produced. But I do recommend research because you wanna get as much information before you commit. So I do recommend it. And most players do research before pulling a trigger on a specific yo-yo. There was a time when begging and asking for a sponsorship used to occur pretty regularly. I'm glad it has fallen by the wayside. But if you are seeking a sponsorship, by all means, practice your craft. And remember, the companies that get in touch with you. Plus, more is involved than just being able to throw a yo-yo. Nowadays, you need a solid media presence. So work your craft. They'll get in touch with you if they want to. And finally, your approach to learning. Learning yo-yo is like learning a new language. 
you start small you learn some phrase or two or a trick or two in this case and then you build on that knowledge until you become proficient or fluent take your time and enjoy yourself because we're just playing with toys okay practice makes perfect and on that note I think we'll call this in check out what we get into for next time I got a really cool yo-yo that I want to share information about. And that review will be up real soon. In the meantime, I'm Simply Mike. This has been the Definitive Yo-Yo, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.